Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. Time for the Winston Venables Show with former Boise State linebacker and assistant coach Winston Venable. The Winston Venables Show is brought to you by Progressive Wealth Management, enhancing wealth for this generation and the next. To speak to a trusted advisor or to learn more about Progressive Wealth Management's financial services, visit pwmmanagement.com. Now joining Winston Venable, here's BJ Reigns. Oh, we're official now. We got the uh, sound guy with the intro there. Thanks again to uh, John Patrick over at KTIK Radio for uh, getting that done for us. But it is Wednesday, and we are back with the uh, Winston Venable show here at uh, BroncoNationNews.com, the social media channels of Bronco Nation News. And uh, that means the Winston Venable show means Winston Venable is here. So, uh, Winston, how's it going, man? I'm doing great. John Patrick crushed that right there, BJ. <laughs> that was awesome intro. You know, you, you tease me a little bit and tell me that, you know, you got a little intro, but that was sweet, man. Well, we're working on it still. We're actually going to get some of the clips uh, more designed. I'm trying to figure out what the uh, copyright rules are in terms of uh, showing some of your highlights and stuff, but we're working on the even more. But at least we got the sound in there. We think thanks uh, Progressive Wealth Management, as you heard the guy say, for uh, sponsoring us here and and uh, allowing you to uh, do this show. And uh, if folks are watching us, uh, make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel. That's how we uh, can build our following and continue to uh, keep this thing moving in the right direction. So uh, please uh, subscribe and like um the uh youtube channel and and uh, if you're on, watching on youtube that's the easiest way to to comment or uh put a question out there for winston we'd love to have that today so uh, if you got a question or a comment uh we would love to hear from you and uh winston as always on wednesdays uh okay foster says good morning everyone good morning to you as well kevin uh but uh first of uh two shows for you today we are going to talk today about the triple option we're going to hear from demario warren the cornerbacks coach uh, kayla biggers a corner about stopping the option and the challenges there and i, I want to get your uh take on that but uh we do have uh bnn after dark coming up tonight so uh who we got tonight BNN After Dark. Yeah, like you said, BJ, it's another Wednesday. Full day with you, man. Let's get it done. But uh, no, we got Daryl Acre, former teammate of mine, 52, probably one of the, the brightest, loving, most uh, caring personalities out there. Love this guy. And uh, Bronco Nation has a lot of love for DA, too. And uh, it's going to be awesome to have him on the show, share some stories about his time in the past and uh representing the blue and the orange yeah found some some pictures uh again figuring out copyright rules and what i can use and not use but i saw one of him holding the uh, milk can after a win against fresno and saw a picture of him and i think the second fiesta bowl as well out there on the field so uh yeah looking forward to catching up with him uh, i believe this will be what episode seven i think of bnn after dark six or seven uh, yeah i gotta is, go gotta go through the guys and, and count them up man this Sometimes is episode just uh high. Episode 10 today of the Winston Venable show. So we are uh, yeah. rolling and uh, Boise State had the bye week. They're back in action against Air Force. And, uh, you know, well, after that bye week, when you get a chance to heal up and, and uh, you know, self scout and kind of focus on yourself and then you kind of turn the page and get back to preparing for an opponent. Uh, what's that week like? Uh, and how much more prepared are you coming out of the bye? Yeah, well, I think these guys, they got to hit the restart, refresh, uh, do whatever they needed to do personally. So it always feels good to be able to do that. But I think it was last week, like I said, these guys are also coming off of 
two pretty good weeks where they, you know, there, there were some changes on staff. Um, they're working on new things. Some of those things maybe they're seeing and they're having this success out there. So my guess is some of these guys, as, as cool as it is to take a little break on the body and the mind, my guess is some of these guys wanted to get back into another week. So now that practice is going on, um, I'm sure it's a, and it's an exciting week. They got a big time opponent. So uh, I think there's a lot of energy in the building. I would imagine there as guys are refreshed uh, and they're ready, uh, ready to go for a new second half of the season, really. Now we are going to talk uh, about the the triple option and and um, you know some of the, the challenges that that come with that and obviously you look at the stats no no surprise but uh, number one in the country in rushing offense is Air Force three hundred and fifty nine point eight six yards uh, per game uh, you know and and you know that's kind of you know what you're getting into when you play Air Force right it, it's going to be the option and all the challenges that come with it. But it has been the pass at times, too, that uh, has given Boise State some problems in some of these games because the uh, you, you get lulled to sleep by the run, and then they, they throw one over the top and get you with the pass. Uh, what, what, are, what are the challenges uh, when you face that triple option, man? Yeah, I think, I think it's one of those things where it's not as easy as it looks or may seem where uh, Air Force is going to run the ball. They stick with running the ball. That is their bread and butter. That is what they do well. And it's almost like, well, okay, everybody knows they're going to do it. And let's figure out a way to stop it. But they're so good at what they do. Um, there's a lot of motion and there's a lot of stuff going on that can trick your eye as a defender. And I'm sure these coaches and players, when they're on these interviews, are going to talk about discipline, eye control, everybody doing their job, because that's really what it's about. And it's hard to have that discipline for 80, 90, however many snaps there is in the football game, every single play. Now, if you slip up four or five times, which can happen because we're human and not everybody has that much discipline for that long a time, those might be four or five big plays, big touchdowns that then they got you. And that's all they're looking for to keep it the game that they want. And with the type of possessions they might only get, you know, a few times to score and they might score those few and it's big. Yeah, that is a big thing. In, in some of the, you know, Boise State's four and four in their last eight games against Air Force. Uh, they had won four in a row, though, by double digits before losing last year on the blue. Uh, but in those games where Boise State falls to Air Force, the common theme has actually been the offense not really doing much. And uh, once Air Force gets a lead, man, they, they're built to play with a lead, right? Just control that clock and just grind it and take seven, eight, nine minute drives. And uh, they're not a team you want to fall behind against. No, yeah, and it, it'll be really interesting because I think uh, the last couple of weeks, Boise State's had some success in the run game. I'm sure they want to stick with that, and that's really Coach Avalos's bread and butter right now as well is the run game. So uh, we might go out there, and it might be a dogfight in the trenches, and it might be a, a, a quick game because there's so much running going on, and it might just be a low-scoring uh, couple plays out there that really, really set the game off. Rudy wants to know what the uh, primary role for the nickel is in the trip against the triple option. Well, I mean, it, it can vary. There's a couple different roles, but I mean, you, you, there's, there's the dive guy, the quarterback and the pitch guy. I mean, there's a couple different options, right? So who are you on? Most likely it's the quarterback or the pitch guy is like a nickel. Um, somebody has got to force, force the pitch for say um, on that option. But uh, and that can be the defensive end, that can be the nickel, uh, but it, it can vary. But uh, no matter what, it's it's a singular job where you have to do your 111th out there, whether you're a nickel linebacker, defensive end, everybody on the field's got their job. Okay, uh, Kevin says, BSU very good against the run this year. I like their chances. Yeah, Boise State does rank number 19 nationally, giving up uh, 101 rushing yards per game. And uh, it's funny, you know, Air Force is averaging 360. So even if you hold them to 250 or something, your rushing numbers, unfortunately, take a, take a you know, go in the wrong direction just because it's what they do every single play. But on the flip side, I guess, the passing numbers probably should, which already lead the nation, uh, probably will will stay uh, you know in that direction if they don't pass very much. Uh, Clint says Noah is going to have to have a big game again on Saturday uh, no against doubt. against Air Force. You agree with that? Yeah, definitely. And and I think that guy's just getting rolling confidence. Uh, he's he's running around that field. So hopefully, like I said, he had some steam. The Broncos have had some steam rolling, and hopefully they can pick off where they left off. And you just mentioned it though. I think we've had. I think it was a couple years back. Had some success in the past game against Air Force. So it'll be interesting to see 
you know, if they can utilize some of the things we've done in the past, or maybe there's still those opportunities out there to attack the, uh, you know, the Falcons defense in the past game. And, you know, maybe we'll see Taylor sling it. Maybe we'll see Sam out there. And um, no matter what, I think what we've seen is Dirk has a great ability to adjust and figure different things out just with these last two games. So uh, that's what, that's what he likes to say. He's playing chess out there and it's an easy game for him or maybe not easy, but he enjoys it. So he'll be all right. Clint says, uh, can't underestimate their pass. You know, they obviously don't throw a lot, but they're sneaky. We talked about that. Um, how, how hard is that where they literally might run for 20 plays in a row if you're a corner to not uh, fall for, for one of the, those plays and get beat deep. Yeah. It's what we talked about earlier. And I mean, it's like, how about this? Okay. You get the same look, the same look, the same look, the same look, you know, 10 times in a row. And then you get the same look, but they just got this little tweak off of it and it turns into a pass. So there's that discipline, right? I mean, and they do a really good job at it. Uh, so it's not, it's not easy. So it's a tough, it's a tough deal to go against an offense that, um, that, that challenges you like that. Uh, it's very deceiving to the eye and, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a battle. It'll be a battle for these guys to, to test their discipline. Well, let, we'll hear from DeMario Warren in a second and Caleb Biggers, but I first want to uh, thank a couple of our great sponsors and pumped to announce that uh, Matt Bousher has uh, re-upped for 2023 with uh, Bronco Nation News, and he's our, our first official advertiser that's locked in for year two. And uh, he also, with that, will uh, have the uh, return of the Matt Bousher show, which I think will be next week, will be the first one because they've got an exhibition game coming up. And uh, we're going to be adding in the uh, – Bowser real estate player of the game on the uh, post game show, both for uh, football and basketball here for the rest of the season. So check out Matt Bowser, Bowser real estate.com. We appreciate him for jumping back on board or staying on board. I should say shop Ridley's.com 13 Idaho locations. They got the at home shopping, the skip app, the home delivery, all that great stuff. Make sure you check out Ridley's family markets in the blue and orange store blueandorangestore.com free shipping any order over $40 that's right any order over $40 online gets you a free shipping and if you're in Boise you can just go to the Boise Town Square Mall there uh, I, I actually think that uh, Travis Hawks from the Blue and Orange Store and and uh, Matt Bowser myself are going to do a little basketball season preview show from the Blue and Orange Store here in a couple weeks so we'll uh, keep you updated uh, on that uh, as well but I mentioned uh, Demario Warren uh, and, and you know it's we don't get full say, uh, you know, being transparent about, uh, you know, who we get to talk to. We can put in requests and then Coach Avalos or the staff or whoever. It's not like the locker room is just open and we can go in and interview whoever we want to. So Boise State, you know, sends out some players. And um, I would have preferred to talk to, a, you know, just being up front, a linebacker or a D lineman the week you're playing Air Force. But uh, we get uh, the corners coach and, and two defensive backs this week. And just the way it works out. They're trying to let some different guys talk that haven't talked much. Uh, but, you know, there, it's still a lot going on. But uh, we did ask uh, Demario Warren uh, about the challenges of stopping the option. And, and, and the first question here was just about uh, the, the DBs and, and their challenge here. Uh, discipline. you got to make sure that you have great eyes. I mean, there's a lot of motion, a lot of movement, making sure that we know what the call is and where our eyes are supposed to be. Because if you get off at one point, I mean, they had an 80-yard touchdown on the first drive against, uh, I think it was Nevada. So you, gotta, you just got to be making sure that you're doing your job every single play. And it could be 15, 20 plays in a row where we're not needed, but all of a sudden there's a post down the middle of the field and, and everybody's going to be counting us to do our job. So it's just making sure that we're consistent with our eyes, our footwork, and making sure that we're in the right place every play. All right, hold on. Before I go any further, Winston, I got to give you the shout out there. He mentioned the very first word he said was discipline. You yeah, it, that. <laughs> good, but, you know, obviously I've been in, in the building, I've been around, and I know football a little bit, but it's – it's debatable, funny. debatable, just a tiny bit. But um, the the funny thing is, is, yeah, it, everybody knows like, you know what you have to do. Everybody knows what they have to do against an Air Force, against this type of team. But it's just you got to go out there and do it. Easier said than done, man. And by the way, the uh, background, uh, there was a, a huge inflatable uh I don't even know what you call it. Scarecrow type, uh, skeleton type, oh, ho Halloween, Halloween kind of Halloween kind of spooky tree that looked like a ghost monster type thing. And so we walked into the facility yesterday and it was kind of set up there in the corner. And we usually stand over to the side and we said, ah, you know, what? let's mix it up for a day. So he's standing right in front of this like okay. Halloween themed uh, decoration. We thought it'd be kind of funny. So that's what you see in the background. Uh, the audio is not great because the blower to blow that thing up was, was right there. We didn't really think about that. But uh, here's the rest of uh, Demario Warren talking about stopping the option it's extremely hard it's extremely hard it's like i mean you're just doing the same thing over and over and over again and you're not seeing the the you don't get to compete 
and then all of a sudden <laughs> there's that time where, where they, the whole team's counting on you, the whole Bronco Nation's counting on you. You got to be in that right spot, and so. Again, making sure that your eyes are right, and they're going to play with it. They're going to give you the same look over and over and over again, and off that look, they'll give you a play-action pass. And so it is extremely hard to, to be disciplined for that long, and that's what this week's all about, making sure that every every day in practice, our eyes and our feet are in the right place. Yeah, it, again, it's going to be difficult. They're, they're great at what they do. They do it well, and they do it better than anybody else in the country. And so it's our job to, to do our best and make sure that, again, we're in the right places at the right time and, and working all together because you got to stay – got to stay on the string. Everybody's got to do their part every single play. If, they, if there's a chink in the armor, they'll find it. And so that's going to be a challenge for us. Yeah, yeah that's imperative. I don't think they had a third down until I think the fourth drive or fifth drive last, last week. And uh, it was late in the second quarter, mid-second quarter. So they didn't even get to third down. So <laughs> you better do a good job on first and second or else it's not going to be a very fun day for you. So, yes, it's very important to ask any offense to make sure that they're off schedule and, and get us in a favorable third down. Yeah, it's imperative, and, and not only a, a three-yard gain going to 13, but a three-yard gain going to five. That's a big difference. Second and five versus second and seven is huge. And so, it's, again, tackling is imperative, and it's not just the breakout runs. Like, you have to tackle them where, they, where, they, where you hit them. If you don't and they start to squeak out some, some dirty runs and start to get to second and four, second and five, it's going to be a long day. So you got to make sure you hit them square, kind of going back to how to tackle Roberts. you got to make sure you're hitting thick with your shoulder pads. What does hitting them thick with the shoulder pads mean there, Winston? Yeah, get getting more of your surface of your body on him. I mean, just you can't you you got to use as much as what you have to uh, get that ball carrier down. How big is tackling though? It's a lot of one on one tackles in space. They kind of try to scheme you and line up and find that one on one guy, and it's a lot of either DBs sometimes or, or linebackers or, or the edge guy a lot. That nickel you're talking about, uh, maybe a safety. I mean, it, it's a one on one tackle a lot of times, and like you said there. Uh, a three-yard run could turn into 15 or 20, or or even a, a you know two-yard run could turn into five, and, and that changes the chains and things like that. How, how big is tackling against yeah, Air Force? It's yeah, it's huge. I mean, that's why it's always, you know, the, it's like the number one thing in defense is tackling, right? Running and tackling. So um, in a game like this, is it even more imperative? Well, I mean, I, it, that's I mean, that's kind of, I don't know. I feel like that's hard to say. It's that tackling would ever be less important for a game. I mean, yeah, sure. They're going to be running the ball a whole lot. They try to put you in those vulnerable situations. Like you're saying, maybe you're out in space. Like last game, I don't know if you saw, but I think it was UNLV. They were – it wasn't your typical um, option. They were, like, getting some sweet plays and getting to the perimeter with these really elongated toss plays. And um, I thought that was a way that they were putting some guys in vulnerable spots out in space making guys tackle. And sometimes they were only getting three, four yards, but they were doing that consistently. Consistently, And like you said, that three or four yards, then you miss a tackle, first down, first down, touchdown. So uh, tackling is huge. There's there's no, no, no ifs and buts about it. How different is to uh, trying to get them behind the chains? I mean, if they're in third and one, a lot of times they're probably going to pick that up. But if they're in third and eight, third and nine, and either have to, you know, try to pass the ball or are just in not in favorable situations. How, you know, he was talking about it there in the middle, but how important is it to not let them get, you know, seven yards on first down? Yeah, huge, because that's their comfort zone, right? I mean, their comfort zone is handing that thing, shooting it right down the pipe and getting those first couple yards that they need for first downs when they're in those manageable situations. Out of their comfort zone, thinking about maybe throwing it a little bit more. And I'm sure they have confidence in the in the throwing game, it's just not their bread and butter. It's not what they do the best. It's not what they like to establish. So if you can get them in those situations, uh, get some hands-on receivers and not let them run those routes and even throw off their timing even more, um, then, then the Broncos should have a decent time rattling this offense if, you, like you're saying, they do get them behind the chains. So it can be a major factor. Now they've got uh, Hazik Daniels, a quarterback who's been there for a while. I think you guys played against him the last couple of years, and he's yeah. improved as a passer as well. But uh, Brad Roberts, the running back, uh, he is fourth in the nation right now, 853 uh, rushing yards. He averages uh, nearly six yards a carry. He's also second nationally with 12 rushing touchdowns. Uh, he's averaging about 121 yards a game. And I know a lot of that is scheme. And obviously, when you get a lot of chances and you run the ball a lot, you're going to put up good numbers. But uh, they've got some, you know, they, they recruit well and to their scheme, and he, they've got some talented players. And and uh, Brad Roberts, one of the best running backs Boise State will see all year. Yeah, I was watching him last week. I mean, he's he's like a tough runner, but he also has this savvy to him a little bit. Where I mean, he was down there in the goal line, got in for a touchdown, I think. And 
I was I was impressed watching him as as more of a runner where you know it wasn't anything too fancy, but man, he sure did find some ways to get some tough yards and kind of you know navigate that space. That was impressive. Well, here is uh, Demario Warren talking about Brad Roberts, and then uh, Caleb Biggers follows up just with the challenge of stopping the option. He brings, runs extremely hard, uh, runs extremely hard with low pad level. You gotta you gotta make sure that you wrap up, or else he'll break your tackle. And again, he's coming at you so fast that uh, you got to be ready to go. If you're not in the right spot, you're a little bit off and you're reaching with your arms, uh, you're not going to bring him down. And so you got to get yourself in a good tackling position that makes your eyes in the right place and you're, you're able to hit him with your shoulder pads. Because if you're not, he's not going to go down. So again, it's just a difficult challenge of making sure that we see him get the ball and then we're in good position to tackle him. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult scheme, but, you know, we always going to get right with everything that, you know, that Air Force got going on. Um, with the option team and running ability, uh, just by taking off blocks and being able to block destructive and stuff like that, uh, you know it's always a, a big challenge against Air Force. But we can, we definitely can, you know, strive to be the best. Oh, definitely important. Um, everybody has to do their 111, uh, and I feel like during that time we can definitely achieve that goal. Well, there is uh, Caleb Biggers and also uh, Mario Warren, the uh, cornerbacks coach, talking about. Uh, having to uh, stop that option. We got some more comments, questions coming in. We appreciate it. Perry says the bye week is huge for preparation. I know we talked about it last week, but uh, I know they're focused on themselves for the most part during the bye week, but Andy Avalos, I think Spencer Danielson did say they snuck in some some option periods. And, and uh, I mean, it goes back to spring ball, though, right? I mean, you guys, have, you, the, the option, they always sneak in periods in the spring, in the summer, uh, in yeah. the fall camp. But uh, that having that extra week is huge, though, right? Uh, and, and, and how much is it, too, playing them every year? I mean, if this was some non-conference game, or you never see the option and then you play it. Uh, how much nice is it that a lot of these guys have seen, you know, have played against them before? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think for the players and the coaches being familiar with things and seeing it every time you, you know, you, you see something the second, third, fourth, fifth time. I mean, I know Coach Avalos has been away, you know, for a couple of years, but he's still seen it years back. And Coach Danielson and those guys have been in the building for a while. So that always helps for sure. And uh, yeah, just take it with the bye week. Uh, it, there's always going to be an emphasis on a few games and Air Force is one of them. So no doubt in my mind, they put that couple periods in and they started working on it. And any extra time you can get, um, I think, is really beneficial, especially with Boise State's offensive uh, challenges they've had this year. And then, um, you know, with the defense, a little extra time to prepare. But also, I mean, like I said, those guys were rolling. So you take a little time off, you, you know, guys go places, do things and uh, they get a little break. It can kind of break up a little a little bit of that rhythm. So you just never know. You never well, know how these guys will come out. This will be the uh, – and speaking of never knowing, this will be the first career road start for Talon Green. Uh, so we'll, let's talk about that in a second. There's a couple of comments, but first, want to uh, thank a couple more sponsors. Hey, United Commercial Insurance can write business policy insurance in 44 states around the country. If you're looking to save some money on your business insurance, whether it's any of the liabilities or workers' comp, check them out, 229-8222. Uh, you can save hundreds of dollars with a quick call or check them out online, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. United Commercial Insurance makes business insurance – easy Boise Dentistry Co. as well check them out locations across the Treasure Valley even down in Mountain Home Caldwell and everywhere in between Boise Dentistry Co. Uh, all the latest technology and just a very friendly staff and they can help out uh, your kids your grandparents you know full family dentistry they'll take you all and they can set up the appointments back to back so your whole family can go in there once knock out all the trips to the dentist so uh, you know they love talking BSU sports with you they make going to the dentist fun as you can see my kids uh, a rare smile there on the screen so check them out BoiseDentistryCo.com hey if you're looking for a new job how about uh, becoming a truck driver? I know uh, it's uh, maybe it's not something you'd think of, and I'm talking everything from the big rig on the screen to the Amazon truck in your neighborhood. Uh, TCS can help you every step of the way to get your permits and the things you need to get out there towing that first load in no time. Uh, it's a very you know nice, uh, booming industry with the pandemic right now. So if you're looking for a fresh start, a career change, transcompservice.com. It's a local company that uh, helps out folks all over the world. Make sure you check them out, transcompservice.com. We got some comments rolling in here. Uh, let's see uh, about uh, Talon Green. Um, was very impressed with Talon at Oregon State. It wasn't his first snap inside the BSU 15. Yeah, he didn't start in a in a uh, a great spot. Uh, but it is the first start. I'm trying to see. Oh, Perry says first road start for Green. Excited to see how he will do. You know, he did play a good chunk of that Oregon State game. But let's be honest, Winston, the game. You know, they're already down. You know, 10, 17 points, whatever it was when he came in. 
Um, I think it's a little different probably than, you know, a key Mountain West game on the road like this where it's, you know, he's coming in from the start and this is a game Boise State really needs to win. Um, not to say that experience wasn't valuable. It was dealing with the crowd energy and all that, but I think this is a little different situation for him. But what what do you make of Talon and what you've seen the last couple of games and what do you think uh, Jerk and the offensive staff can do to try to get him in, in a rhythm early and kind of help uh, calm him down? Yeah, no, I think I think – if we're talking about, I mean, especially if he stayed around for the last couple of days where these guys had off, um, I'm guessing Talon was probably one of the guys that could have maximized the most from the bye week if him and Dirk got together and, you know, really dialed in on some things. I think his development over one week and just to settle down and, and hey, you, it seems to me that he's the starter. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, I know Sam's, in, in the conversation as far as being a good quarterback, but it seems like this is Taylor's show now. And, oh, yeah. and that's, and that's what he's got. That's what he has going into this game. Now. I mean, it's the bye week He got to hit the restart and now it's like, Hey, this is, this is my, my offense, my team. And I know he's young, so maybe he doesn't have that mentality yet, but he's going to start having that. And it's games like this that create that I'm the starter going into this game. Uh, big game, conference game, let's go. So uh, it's huge for a guy like Taylor. It's huge for his confidence, uh, huge for his experience. This is a this is a huge game for him, for sure. Kevin says Boise State was plus four on some betting sites. I got some cash on that money line. So he's thinking, uh, if, you, if you think Boise State's going to win on Saturday, uh, you could get a nice return on your investment because Air Force is actually about a four-point favorite uh, heading into this game. Um, he says on the flip side, we we're talking about if Boise State gets a two-score lead, Air Force might have to end up throwing. Um, and then somebody else mentioned getting an early lead is important in this game. Um, need to start fast, get the Falcons on their heels, can't afford offensive inefficiency right off the bat. Yep, got to get a lead. Uh, how important is it? We talked about not falling behind, but yeah, getting that first touchdown, helping Talon in the offense kind of relax a little bit, but also, uh, you know, not letting Air Force, you know, come down and take the lead right off the bat. It's all it is, man. Comfort zone, right? It's get them out of their comfort zone, get them out of their comfort zone early. All right, get them into panic mode, get them doing things that they're not used to doing or that they don't have as much success doing. I mean, that's the, the name of the game. They're going to try to do that to us. My guess is, they're going to try to force, you know, Taylor to throw the ball a little bit because we're yet to see Taylor come out there and really sling the ball consistently and put up some great numbers. So that's what they're going to try to do. Take away the run game, make us throw it. So there's going to be this chess mask match going on out there. That'll be pretty cool to watch. And I know a couple of years ago, uh, I don't think there were any fans or there weren't very many two years ago because of the pandemic. When you guys played down there, Jack Sears had that big game when Hank was out with COVID. Um, I don't know how many other times you've been down there, but uh, and I know you guys are in the locker room for a lot of this, but they have the running of the cadets, which is a big thing. They have the parachute team come parachute in right before the game. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty special environment there, uh, going to the Air Force Academy for a football game with all the traditions and things they do there. And obviously, not to mention the, uh, you know, sacrifices and things that the, the players are doing, you know, to, to protect the country and things like that. And all the cadets in the stands during the game. I remember them uh, getting on Riley Wimpy for his last name. And he had some fun going over there after the game and taking pictures with him. But uh, what just a unique atmosphere. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. And I know I know uh, Andy and you guys, you know, when you were there would do would, would educate the guys right on kind of what what it's like going down there to the Air Force Academy and making sure that there's a, a, a respect factor there for, totally. for what those guys do. Yeah, totally. There's there's always that talk. And I mean, I think it's everybody kind of knows, but you have to know what you're getting yourself into. You got to know what the type of people you're playing against. And then you got to have that 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 respect for it, that mutual respect for your opponent and um, a heightened sense of respect for this opponent, for sure. Anytime you're playing any of these military academies. Right. So these people are literally serving our country, pr protecting us, providing for us all these different things. And um it is a, a major sign of respect when you go out there and play. And these guys are, dude, they're doing it big. Those, those cadets are all tailgating right when you, uh, right when you pull up their, their student section, the cadet section is right there behind the visitor's bench. So it's, it is a pretty cool atmosphere for sure, man. And uh, it, it's exciting. It's an exciting place to play. It's got a little different taste in the air, a little bit different smell out there. It's kind of cool. Well, it'll be a, it'll be fun on Saturday. It's a big one. Boise State at Air Force Broncos are the only undefeated team in the in the league, Winston, and really a win here uh, knocks out. Uh, uh, okay, bro, chill. By the way, says he's an Army vet. He loves when Air Force gets stomped. Um, 
uh, the Army Air Force, what they call it, the Commander's uh, Commander in Chief Trophy, I believe, or whatever it is. But uh, uh, we'll appreciate you, uh, OK Bro Chill, for for being a, a veteran there and in, in the Army, and thank you for your service. But uh, uh, it, it's a huge game win since we kind of wrap this up because uh, it, it really puts uh, Boise State in the driver's seat. It knocks out Air Force pretty much. They'd have three conference losses all of a sudden. Um, but uh, Boise State, you know, trying to keep pace. You would think the other four games are, are pretty winnable. Maybe at Wyoming could be a tricky one. Maybe Utah State at home. But, you know, it, uh, going to Reno and, you know, Colorado State, neither of those really scary based on what you've seen to this point. So this would seem to be the toughest Mountain West game left on the schedule. And this would be a big one to, to knock off and keep pushing towards that uh, Mountain West championship game. Yeah, obviously, yeah, for sure, man. I think we can try to look ahead and, the one thing I'd say is anything can happen in college football, but yes, sir. I think that uh, Boise State's got one of their biggest challenges ahead right now. And man, if they can get this one off. And, and the crazy thing is, it's just not much consistency in the Mountain West right now. I mean, there's yeah. there's people transferring, there's injuries, there's coaching changes. If there's not a year for somebody to just say, hey, let's run this thing and take control, Um Man, it's Boise State, and it's this year. So I mean, it's all set up for the taking. Yeah, I was and gonna say as, made... as bad as it's been, man. They're they're yeah. all you look up, and they're the only undefeated team left. Yeah, no doubt, man. And they they got every opportunity I think ahead of them to to put it together and and make it happen. I think this is a good year for them to to figure it out late. Kevin says Navy here. I love when they get stomped. Also, he says tell Air Force that real pilots land on aircraft carriers. Uh, I like the trash talking here with the uh, Navy and uh, Army Air Force. Uh, Clint says, thank you guys for your service. Appreciate you. Uh, Winston, if anybody came in late, uh, give us one more final preview for BNN After Dark tonight, man. BNN After Dark, number 52, middle linebacker, Daryl Acree, uh, larger he, than life personality. I is, he love two this time, is he two-time Fiesta Bowl? Yeah, 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 I believe, yeah, I believe his first year was uh, – it's a first Fiesta Bowl year. Yeah, two okay. time Fiesta Bowl champ. Yeah, he's got a good personality. He'll probably tell some stories, right? He maybe isn't uh, you know, as as uh maybe maybe not as well known. Maybe he is, but uh, you know, he he uh certainly is a guy that I think is gonna bring it tonight. Oh yeah, for sure, man. DA he he'll have some stories. And no, he's like I said, he's a he's got a great personality, man. He's a really good good dude, fun dude to be around, always got this huge bright smile and um uh, Man, yeah, he could run around on that field and smack you too. Had a little bit of a Ray Lewis personality too, so uh, it'll be fun to chop it up with with Da. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed seeing some of his highlights. And uh, again, there's a real cool picture of him kissing the uh, milk can uh, trophy from you guys were wearing the orange jerseys on the blue and had a win over uh, a win yeah. over Fresno, I believe. And so, uh, yeah, looking forward to it tonight, eight o'clock. Again, that'll be subscriber only. I will send out the email here today if you're a subscriber, but uh, you don't need the email. You can just go to BroncoNationNews.com, click on the uh, live videos tab, then click on BNN After Dark. And you'll have a link uh, there with all the old episodes. And if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, you'll see the newest episode at the bottom for tonight's show. And you can watch that live at 8 o'clock. Just refresh your page if it's not uh, showing up as live at 8 o'clock. And still time to jump in and subscribe. We'd love to have you subscribe. You can do the monthly. six ninety nine a month is all it is. Or you can pay up front for the year and jump in and get a uh, get access to that show tonight with John Mallory, uh, Daryl Acri, uh, Winston Venable, and myself. So, uh, Winston, appreciate your time as always, man. And we'll do it again uh, here in about uh, 10 and a half hours. Let's get it done, BJ. Right on, man. Thanks for having me again. And by the way, real quick, just a programming note for folks. Uh, the Mountain West is holding virtual media days today for basketball. Men's basketball media days are virtual today. Uh, they start here in about an hour with the release, or two hours, I guess, 1130. They'll release the uh, predicted order of finish, the all-conference team, and then uh, Coach Leon Rice will talk at 2.30 today. Uh, that'll be virtually, but we'll be uh, tweeting out some of those, and we'll uh, record that and try to get the video up on uh, on the YouTube channel as well. So have a great day. Appreciate everybody for checking us out. Uh, we're talking to – who are we talking to today? Uh, I think it's Nate Potter, uh, and I forget who we're talking to for the players. I think it's Shea Oladipo, and then, uh, oh, John Ojuku. So we'll get those interviews up on the YouTube nice. channel as well. So uh, appreciate everybody for checking us out. Make sure you're subscribing on YouTube, hitting that like button, that subscribe button, that smash button, all that great stuff. And uh, we will talk to you tonight, 8 o'clock, with Winston and John Mallory being in After Dark. Have a great day. This is Bronco Nation News. BroncoNationNews.com, the Winston Venable Show, presented by Progressive Wealth Management.